podcast we just missed a lot we missed last week due to old Irma um, but welcome to the life restoration podcast I'm here with Jason and Eric and I'm Robin and we don't know what we're gonna talk about today again it usually works out well though so stick around um, hang in there with us and um, interact with us so yep. All right, what are we going to talk about, you guys? What's going on in your lives? How was your day? What do we think we need to take to the people? I think what we were talking about um, a little while before, or right before we started, was just uh, one of the topics that we've been kicking around was gratitude, um, appreciation, and, and self awareness. And self awareness, and how those things uh, do and don't work together. And how there's a misconception um, with a lot of people as to, you know, I want to be grateful. I'm going to... I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be this. I'm trying to be that. And um, all of it. I know for me, I've gone down that path for years of like make a gratitude list um, to be grateful. And um, just in the last week, I've got a much greater awareness around some of that yeah you know just about and not that what I was doing before is bad you right. know um, that's I think that's one of the things that's also much been much more freeing in the last couple of months is as I've um, experienced different things and we've all learned some new stuff the freedom of feeling like oh I was doing it wrong right before like it wasn't about it's that I was doing it wrong it's just right. about now I have a greater understanding and awareness of yeah what this is right you know? and um so i i'm thankful I'll, that you're learning it now yeah. not five or ten years from now five or ten years from now yeah and, 15 um, 20 25 yeah so i, I don't know i think part of the reason i want to express that first too is, is there's a tendency for us to like when we're people are like trying to find the magic formula right to and you hear a lot of that online it's like if you wake up here, here's the magic formula for success today right. in this three minute video Here's a magic formula for, you know, positive thinking in this five minute video or, you know, piece of paper or checklist. And, um, you know, not that those things are bad because there's a lot of good content out there with some of that stuff. Um, but I think uh, the way Jason was kind of explaining it earlier, too, with how we become aware that to, to, to leverage that in its most powerful way yeah. and keep us in our most powerful state. Um, it's not a matter of trying to to be get anything. there or be there. Yeah. Uh, it's a matter of working on self, not working on, of, of learning self-awareness. To be. Of, yeah. of self-awareness. Right. Cool. Yeah, learning to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And so we live in a world of wannabes. Everyone wants to be mm -hmm. something. Wants to be richer, wants to be thinner. Smarter. Yeah. Uh, successful. Wants yeah. to be a good mom, dad, yeah. husband, wife. Wants to be all sorts of different things. And the problem is, is that the more you want to be it, the more you try to be it, the farther it gets away from you. Yeah. And so you begin to build this old story or you begin to build a story of uh, frustration, really, interference mm -hmm. to who you are. And so we were all created to be, period. And if you're not willing to do the work to find out who you are, mm -hmm. you will never be in alignment with who you were created to be. Right. That's good. And it really is in contradiction to a lot of what we know from the past. You know, there's a lot of... Or what we've learned our whole lives. Yeah, like, you know, we, we just go out and attempt to 
consume information. There's yeah. a lot of good information out there. Or we uh, practice trying to be what we want. So we go to school, we learn, we uh, you know do all the things that we think it's going to take for us to be that. And it ultimately leaves you filled with frustration, mm -hmm. resentment, mm -hmm. anger, lack. That, yeah, that all stems from fear. Yeah. Right. I think one of the things that I heard said the other day that made sense to me was that, you know, there's a lot, there's a big push to be doing something. You know, yeah. like that's do good. Work. Do work. Yeah, do Ask work. Gary do, yeah, do work. Go do work. And and there's nothing wrong with doing work. That's no, you, you got to do work. Yeah, do work for something to happen. Right? Um, but where I think a lot of people miss, and, and then some of the stuff that you see out there that is taught, is there's a predecessor to doing work, or there's a precursor to doing work, which is getting in alignment with who you are yeah. so that you're in the you know right vibe frequency zone state whatever word you want to use on that so that the work you're doing is the work that actually needs to be done in the moment that you're in based on who you are right so it goes back to that you know practice doesn't make perfect perfect practice makes perfect yeah you have to be in alignment doing the things in which you were created to do for it to manifest into who you are, yep. and if you're just if you're just if you're just you know we heard this analogy the other night and uh, vacuuming the floor without it being plugged in to the wall or turned on we're just making lines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? you know we're just making lines turn the music up yep. do work and the reality is is that the carpet's dirty yeah. It's not getting any cleaner. And right. it looks like maybe you're doing something for a minute. And it even feels like you're doing something. You've right. got energy. You've got momentum. You're making lines yeah. in the carpet. I used to do that quite a bit. Make lines in the carpet. Yeah. And do a lot of work. But it still ended up in a really nasty place. Well, it just keeps getting dirtier. <laughs> That's the part of life is that, you know, if, if, you're not, if it's not getting cleaner, it's getting dirtier. Yeah. And yeah. And you're like, no one's watching you anymore. No one cares about the work you're doing anymore because you're irrelevant to yourself. You're trying to be something and... Well, it creates a level of frustration. Eventually, you stop. Yeah. Well, because you get frustrated, right? right. It's like, it's, it, it turns into this mundane, boulder-rolling effort because it's not... You're not in your lane or your flow of what you really need to be doing or should be doing or, or created to be doing. So you're doing something else. And that's why it feels so awkward, uncomfortable, frustrating, forced, you know, is that, and most people do it out of, hey, this is what I've, I read a book or somebody told me this or teacher told me well, this or parents told me this. Trial and error yeah. is kind of a, a standard way for young people to find out who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, go out and until you've done something, like you have to go do something to know whether or not you like it or not, mm -hmm. right. or whether or not it's it's you. And so there is some truth to that universal principle. You know, in regards, the best way to find out who you are is to find out who you're not. Right. There is some truth to that. That's the action, but without the the part that has not been taught to any of us that I'm aware of maybe some very few but more in the eastern hemisphere of the world is the ability to remove the interference mm -hmm. and listen to yourself and when I was on my way to work today I was thinking about you know really the the greatest skill to learn in life if someone were to ask me like you know what is the greatest skill to what learn? should I learn I would say to listen mm -hmm. and so but then to me the next level would be uh, you know authentic communication what am I listening to so it begins and ends with me so first I have to listen to myself I have to learn to listen to who I am I have to get quiet and then once I've 
begun to master that right. skill mm -hmm. because I don't believe it's something that we are born with. Uh, I believe it's just something that you have to be intentional about. Right. Specifically in our world today with so much interference, so many things oh, that yeah. get in the way yeah. of taking the time to listen to yourself. Uh, and I don't mean listen to your crazy ass thoughts. I mean listen to your breath, listen to right. your heartbeat and remove the insanity of who you want to be and allow the true self of you who you were created to be, uh, source, God, the God in you, to come out and begin to guide, lead, and direct you to the practice of being who you are, which will move you to that next level. So I think it's, you know, if the greatest skill you could ever learn is learning to listen, mastering, yeah. listen, listening. And I don't know if everybody approaches, and now that I've been doing this for a few months you know like and when you say it's this you know mastering a skill i don't know that most people approach something like this and really think of it as like the way they would have learning how to play baseball mm -hmm. or learning how to play a guitar or something like that where it's right. like hey you're really probably gonna suck at this the first it's gonna be really awkward it's yeah. gonna be really weird like you're just not gonna be great at it the first couple of times you do it for a while maybe right um, but if it's something that you really understand and know that's beneficial for you whatever it's, maybe it's like school or whatever like, yeah. you know, we're able to learn something it takes time I mean I know with with me getting started with the meditation stuff there was a there's still like depending on how my day is gone and what's going on like there's still a lot of interference that takes time to stop and breathe and get through before I can get to a place where I hear myself you know there's just yeah. a lot going on and that take it took time for me to get to a place where I even realized that I'd gotten to that place mm -hmm. you know for a long time I, I was doing it and thinking I'd gotten into that place and I was still hearing the other static and voices and, and thoughts you know that were going on so it's it does take a dedicated practice and willingness to say I'm gonna sit down because I see value in this because I know it's this is more valuable than going and doing the work first is to get in alignment first absolutely yeah there's no doubt about it and it's something that we're not taught as yeah westerners yeah you know we are not and even the meditation that is being taught uh becomes no different than anything else that's out there where we begin to control it well i only like to meditate in the morning because if i meditate in the afternoon or at night I'm not able to focus as much, or if I don't have my yoga mat and my meditation chair and my, you know, every, all the things put, the oil and the this and the that, put in the right place, it becomes like we talked about in the past yeah. about how we try to control, you know, studying religion or studying anything else in our lives that it, we had to make everything perfect in our environment. Yeah. And then we were able to get into this place. Well, that's crap. This is all about being able to breathe mm -hmm. and know who you are in the midst of the storm. Right. And so if we pig back a little bit on, on our last podcast of, you know, there's a lot of people that went through the storm. Yeah. There's a lot of different levels of, of environmental loss. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is not like the marshes are gone or the ocean or the sand, stuff like that. I mean, you, people, different people's environment, their houses. Some people had electricity. Some people didn't have electricity for a long time. Right. Uh, you know, if, if you did lose electricity, you got to restock your, your food and then you got storm shutters on or some people lost their house completely or flooded or this or that. But the reality is, is that none of those environmental effects have anything to do with who you are and when you can learn to realign yourself with that uh, truth then you're able to overcome anything that this life throws at you I'm gonna interject here for a second so going back on something you said you talked about getting in alignment first and then you just talked about going through something horrific or tragic and realigning yourself mm -hmm. so 
talk a little bit more in depth so people can really get an understand get an understanding clearly of what that looks like. The which part? The oh, realigning? Aligning yourself and then going to do whatever and then also the realigning yourself after something happens. So so here's the problem. We've talked about this before. Here's the problem. If we're just going to wait for someone to tell us who we are, there are plenty of people in life that are going to do that. Yeah. And they could be very close people to you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that may not be in alignment with you where they're telling you who you are. Yeah. Do, do uh, this, oftentimes do parents, uh, helicopter parents, do that to their kids because they're living out their old story. Yeah. And what this is, is it, it's about... getting quiet enough to hear yourself and to align with the creator of you, the creator of all things. And it's not a label, it's not a, uh, a belief, it just is. And for you to know that, you have to be willing to do the hardest work, which is putting yourself in this place to practice listening to your breathing yeah like one one of the words that i like that's been used a lot lately is put your place put yourself in a place to receive yeah you know and and um for whatever reason that registered real well with me but um yeah you're right like if there's tons of people out there and things out there that will tell us who we are if you're not willing to take the time to get yourself in a position to understand who you are and so and what we what messages. ends up happening is that we listen to that, mm -hmm. and then it a storm comes, and it destroys our environment. So for men, it's like work. Yep, that's a mm -hmm. huge thing. Uh, I certainly can speak to that. Uh, or recovery, you know, everyone's telling you you need to be sober. Yeah, or you need to be skinnier, or you need to eat healthier. Or you need to do this. this. You need to do that, and then. The storm comes through, and your identity is wiped out, right. and then you're mm -hmm. then you have no idea who you are, and you just spent all this time thinking that you were somebody because oh, yeah. you were listening to somebody else, and then you're just as lost except for that much more forward in the future, and so you have nowhere to realign to. Yeah. You know, and I experienced that re with religion and recovery. Uh, you know, that it's a traumatic experience to think that you have a handle on mm -hmm. who you are and then the storm of life comes through and you realize that everything that you thought you knew who you were uh, is not. Yeah. And then you, you're like, what do I do? Yeah. And so the importance, it's the same, whether you're realigning or you're aligning for the first time, it's being willing to listen to the energy, the power, the creation that is you, that is in you, mm -hmm. that comes from you, so that you can then be with that for some time yeah. and not control it. And it's just a willingness to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one thing that I know for me as a guy and as a as a doer and as a checklister mm -hmm. that was it's still at times really difficult for me because i have to sit down and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try to hear myself yeah. or i'm going to try to listen right mm -hmm. and that effort is what like you never get there trying you know like i'll sit and sit and i'm like oh my god like i'm trying and it's like sometimes i have to unplug stop reset and you know and then sit back down and just be yeah. there you know and that in and of itself is not not um habitual for me yet still like it's it's right. still not i'm so um addicted to thinking and envisioning you know like it's it's like sound comes in from the room or anywhere else boom picture goes on in my head definition goes off right like it's like boom 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 so it's like all that of just being able to start stop slowing things down and just receive without defining, without 
analyzing, um, analyzing you know, uh, everything and trying to figure out what is going on. Or there's, I've just noticed like there's so much of a story that goes on with certain things, like, and it's like instantaneous that I'm like, wow, I've really yeah. spent a lot of years pre planning my life out based on whatever stimuli is coming at me at this point in time. And I immediately go in this mode of boom, 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 you know? And it's been this thing of trying to protect myself by neatly defining everything that gets crashed down and crashed down and crashed down. But I've only become aware of that recently of how aggressive that's been in my psyche, you know? Mm -hmm. And to be able to just detach from that and sit is really refreshing. Like, it feels good, you know? Yeah. To be and, and that's when I come out of meditating, like, I feel like, Oh man, that was great. It's almost like when and a lot of people are quite to sleep. Like when you first wake up in the morning, you're just like, man, like I don't want to get up. <laughs> yeah. You know that type of thing. But I don't. I don't want people to hear that it's. If you're if you're starting to meditate or you're just beginning to explore that, um, you know, don't go into it thinking that it's just going to be. Close my eyes. Blissful. Yeah. Hail Mary, Mother of God, whatever it is, you know, that you're used to doing where you sit down and pray and do something and it's like boom, bada, boom, and you're done, you know, because it's so counter to what we're, what we've been trained, yeah. you know, it is, it's like counterculture of everything we've been taught, everything we've trained, even the stuff mm -hmm. I was listening to earlier about how we approach and align, I'm like, this is like almost the opposite of what they taught us in the church. What's well, it, it, they teach it to you in every aspect of life, whether it's religion or business or whatever yeah. yeah politics business um education system western mm -hmm. education system it's like the bell goes off you sit down you get your little notepad off and someone's going to tell you external stimuli what is yeah and the reality is is that that's what is from their perspective based on how they've been programmed or what they've been taught how they've lived their lives and that's why, you know, we don't get anywhere. That's why education or classrooms are filled with students and they graduate and all this stuff and then they don't know well, where they're going right. to go. They're sending them to school and saying, you know, hey, here's the projections over the next 10 years of what's going to be where the money is. You need to figure out a way to make this what you love, you know, and yeah. then you get a gr you get generations of people who come out and, and you see this all the time with degrees and things like that. And nobody's in their passion nor do they even have a clue what that is right because there's no time energy or influence put in that area it's all about economics and like here's where the money is so here's what we're going to teach you and there's only one way to do it it's this way and i've always found at least with my experience when somebody's telling you who you are they're basically expressing to you who they're not mm -hmm. you know and that in the, the hope <laughs> and and you know because they figured that out you know, then in some whether they realize it or not, and and then you get a whole bunch of pre-programmed people who are not in in line with who they are, and they're wondering around why they're miserable, and why they're running around, overeating, addicted to this, addicted to that, addicted to suffering. Well, it's because the whole focus the whole time they've been anywhere they've gone has been, let me tell you who you need to be based off the culture, the economy and all these things that are around you so that you can go be a productive little ant. Mm -hmm. I can speak a little to the storm of life, you know, something coming in and really rocking your world as far as your identity because when I was diagnosed with cancer and everything moved so quickly to, it's already spread to your lymph nodes, we've got to have surgery, we got to do this, we got to do that, blah, 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 blah. And just even that loss of that long blonde hair and this whole literal identity mm -hmm. changing that it like rocks you to your core that you have to figure out like who am I and who am I, you know, completely bald, sick or whatever, mm -hmm. like who am I? Not this identity as blonde Robin or, you know, this certain persona, but who am I? And so, I mean, it's easy to say now that I'm glad that was taken away from me because where would I be without it? Would I still be going on the path or Jason still be going on, you know, the little path of pretending we were happy or this or that. So it's interesting to hear his 
you know, description of the identity that we don't know who we are. But I thought I knew who I was. You know, I thought yeah. I know. And that goes back to what you were saying with um, not saying what you were doing was wrong. Just understanding that now you have a better understanding of things. And that leads to our topic of just being more aware. self-aware, being well, awareness. And, and that and that creates gratitude even in the midst of trials. Right. When you're aware, then you can appreciate where you are and what's going on right in the moment. In any moment. In any moment. You yeah. can't try. You're saying this really. You can't try to be grateful. I can't try to pr- appreciate. What I can be is very self-aware so that I have an acute sense of what is touching me or connected to me or influencing me or around me in those moments so that I can appreciate all those things in a way that if I'm not self-aware, well, it's it's as simple as this. When I'm not self-aware, I don't appreciate numerous things. Right. The the more self-aware I am, the more gratitude and appreciation I experience because I'm acutely aware of more things that are in my moment than if I'm not. You know, and you and I were talking about one of the things I did this morning was like, you know, meditate in the car for 15 minutes, got out and took a longer, I went a different route into the office, which was outside longer and just being able to appreciate a lot of stuff that normally I'd walk right, right. by, walk out right over, not even notice that it was in existence, you right. know, whether it's a smell or whether it's something visual and, and, uh, it's much more unconditional when you're self-aware than it is conditional of like, yes. I'm grateful for, um, a beautiful house. Not yeah. that being grateful for a beautiful house is wrong, but that's conditional, right? right. Like if I lose that house, am I still going to be grateful? Well, my gratitude, at least in that expression is conditional upon that thing I have. An unconditional gratitude is just, I, I'm, I'm, uh, really, um, appreciative of how I feel yeah. and my feelings and the yeah. things that I am experiencing in this moment. And learning. You know? Well, and who you are yeah. because the you know where you came from. Not, you know, the creator of all things, but we each have taken our own adventure. And if you spend time examining those things, you are able to then have this awareness of where you came from Mm -hmm. in the what we know to be true is that I just jumped on the quantum wave in case you were wondering but uh, and what we know to be true is that we are energy you know we all have our own frequency which simply is a vibration Mm -hmm. Um, and it begins with your heartbeat when you were formed and It was well before you had any kind of thought as a human being. And you began to broadcast this frequency of your heartbeat. And that is what we are doing when we meditate or get quiet. Um, Our buddy Kyle C says, uh, you know, uh, I just got done closing my eyes for a couple hours or 15 minutes or whatever it was, you know, to move, remove the labels and the stigmas and all these things from it. It really is just, you, you don't even have to get into a position to receive. What we're doing is removing all the sensory in our lives. It's almost like a sensory deprivation tank, uh, mm-hmm. which works extremely well. But it, it what you're doing is you're just removing the the interference, interference. in listening mm-hmm. to your frequency right. your broadcast and the more you do that then the more you can hear and the more you can see mm-hmm. what is going on in and around you and it automatically gives you that appreciation for who you are and then you, you'd mentioned something about the well, I'm not sure what it was, the unconditional. Mm-hmm. So, you know, unconditional love is the ability to see beyond the current person or environment or whatever it is and accept them for who they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But 
that would be if we had the ability to love. And so what love is, love is creation, period. Love is energy, it is life. Mm -hmm. And when we get in alignment with that life, with that energy, then we are able to go out and be the energy, the life yeah. that we were created to be. And then would you say that then once we're aligned with that, then the things that we do, right, because we're in alignment, are able to amplify our frequency in a way that connects us and brings things towards us um, versus, I don't know what the other word would be, but it, it amplifies our frequency in a way that attracts things towards us. Yeah, I, I mean... It, what we desire, like what, what, our, what our true person... Yeah, I call it, you know, it, I, I say I'm, you know, it's when my hair stands up on my body and I know I'm getting paddling out and paddling into the wave of infinite possibility here. Uh, that's what it is. It's like all of the power that is life, mm -hmm. you plug into. Yeah. And when you plug into that power, there is nothing that you cannot do do right. or be but you have to learn how to plug into that power you know you can't ride the wave you can't go surfing if you don't get into the water yeah i think for some people i get a good i don't know for like me like one of the things that i equate to being in that spot of what you're talking about is like those conversations where are moments where you like lose yourself and you, your energy, you can feel it, and you're having, you're talking and having this conversation with somebody, and you know, like, hey, I don't even know that I even said that. Like, where that came from, you know? It was yeah. like moments of gold or whatever you want to call it, right? Like some people say, like that was fire or where it was. But when you really think back, you're like, where did that, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. You know, it wasn't something that I quote knew in my head. But I just was able to authentically communicate with somebody in a way that was life-changing for both of us. And it's almost like you're talking to yourself at the same time you're talking to somebody else. And there's like this high energy connection. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, those are the, some of the moments that I can like look at and go, okay, I'm, that was plugged in because I got, I got out of the way. You know, I was, you know, I don't know if you've got other stuff other than that, but I know for me, that's like one of the. So I, I was just, yes, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, juice, we call it the juice. Yeah. Join us in creating energy or emotion. Yeah. That's the juice. And, um, but what I was thinking about, I was like looking at the other side of the stick. And so the other, the other side of this is knowing that you should be grateful. Yeah. Like we <clears throat> know it's undeniable if you were to take the time and look at your things in your life, we know that we should be grateful mm -hmm. about all these different things in our life because of where we came from. But that doesn't change the way in which we feel inside. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that that is the other side of the stick. That is trying to use the external thing or external knowledge to make yourself be something that you're not right mm -hmm. and you know we've, we've we've done it with all sorts of different things we try to be skinnier try to be sober try to be closer to god try to do this try to do that and the farther down the road we get it doesn't change the emptiness that is in here and people just what what, what have we heard over however long you're not trying hard enough mm -hmm. yeah and the reality is is that you can't try hard enough and so you know we're, we're sitting around uh, a world of people that are suffering and judging and trying to force themselves their beliefs onto you that they don't even believe nor could they even explain it nor do they do the work yeah to be it and it's it can be a, a very weird place to get into and we've experienced 
you know, the vibrations of making a decision to do something different mm -hmm. for the betterment of ourselves and receive tremendous judgment from, you know, people that are close to us. Right. And uh, that can also mess up your ability to or willingness to find out who you are yeah. keep moving forward and the reality is is that we're this energy and we are going to either continue to bring the past into the present or we are going to just be okay with the past mm -hmm. and position ourselves for a new present yeah which allows us to experience a future of infinite possibilities and that is the process that it takes it takes the willingness to do that work mm -hmm. and after you do it over and over and over and over again you begin to experience these things that are undeniable and, and it doesn't matter what people say you know it and you continue to do it and be it yeah. mm -hmm. and that's where you find like you know people that are just like they seem like they're in the zone and it doesn't matter what's going on in the world as, yeah. or their environment and oftentimes you know our our united states western hemisphere you know we say we love everybody or want to love and help everybody but the minute somebody next to you reaches some sort of level of success that you think you deserve then you might pat them on the back but really you've got that resentment anger and fear inside of you yeah and you cannot have that um unconditional yeah mm -hmm. uh, you're patting them on the back with a steak knife yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then, you're, then, the then you're saying why not me <laughs> yeah yeah and then you're trying you're like well, wait a minute i was doing all this stuff too and i'm not getting that Right. And I'm not happy, and I'm not this, and I'm not that. So now, you know, you, you s disconnect yourself from the energy, which is the closer, if you're around a bunch of people that are successful, or around a bunch of people that are happy, you know, or the up other side, if you're around a bunch of people that are pissed off and mad and sad, or whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever you, energy you are connected to, that's what you will be. Yeah. And whatever you're focusing on. Wherever yeah. your focus goes, energy so flows. Energy flows. Yeah. Tony yeah. Robbins. I think that's a good place to stop. Right there. Any you have Eric any? and I have a hard time stopping. Yeah. I know, I know this. That's why would you, that's would why you I go like being the hostess. And I can time. you know, just kinda navigate, ask questions, but yeah, I don't know when to say when. Kind of tie this up with as far as I mean, I think that was a good that closing good. with right. uh you're like, okay. Uh with where your focus it where your focus goes energy flows so hopefully you guys have learned something tonight and or today depending on when you're watching this or what country you're in because times are different yes. um but um i think there was a lot of great nuggets in there a lot of good personal advice that you guys shared so yeah. I think that's a wrap until next week. But please let us know if you have questions or if you'd like for us to cover any different topics. Um, you know, we enjoy what we're learning and what we're um, evolving to every day, new things. So if you have any input or want to just tell us. It is an adventure. What is There's up? no doubt about it. Yeah, and it is. You know, you can lay down and die, or you can join the adventure. I just pictured that show we watched last night where she laid down and pretended she was having a heart attack. <laughs> lay down and die. It's like Roll you know, over and die. Just because you curl up in the fetal position doesn't mean that life is not moving forward. Yeah. So get up, brush yourself off. Dry your eyes. And, Here's a tissue. and take a breath mm -hmm. and start a new day. Yeah. A sunny day. No matter what time of the day. No doubt. Yeah.